Hiya folks. So, one of the most frequent questions I get that isn't involved with hobby stories and hobby nightmares and, and other life things like that is how the hell do I make this expensive hobby more affordable to me? And how do you do it? Well, that is a very cool and pertinent question that I'll be getting to in this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, there's Patreon down below if you want to buy me a pint. Um, as I've said before, I also get this question, how much should I give, how much do you, do you need? I'm like, I don't need anything, okay? Whatever you can afford to give me 10 times, right? That amount, give me that amount. So if you can afford to give me a tenner, do a quid, right? That's, that's my normal rule when I when I give to other people. So, um, and again, you don't even have to. And the Discord is free. So come on and, and say hello to everybody and, and have a good time with us, all right? Uh, because, yeah, we, we like talking hobby with people and talking life and writing and all that sort of stuff with people so first of all um how do i keep the hobby uh better for me well first of all i need to shout out somebody um he's gonna get very embarrassed but i'm not gonna do his full name anyway and that is james uh, james thank you very much my man um you, um he, he recently sent me some models which is very very nice of him i'm uh, not here yet but uh, thank you very much for doing that um and moving on yeah, number one, become a YouTuber, I guess. Um, but number two, in, going into this hobby, it is a very, very expensive one. I mean, know that if we have other halves or family members or people like that, it can be quite hard to justify getting yourself some models, right? Every now and again. Um, one thing I would say is maximize your birthdays and Christmases, right? Make sure that people know exactly what you need, exactly what you want. And it's all about communication. One of the things that people don't normally tell you, I'm going to give you all the normal advice in this video, by the way, which is going to be coming up in a minute. But one thing people don't normally tell you is, hey, you need to communicate with your friends and family what you like about Warhammer and the army that you're collecting and why you're passionate about it and why it means a lot to you, right? There's no sense being embarrassed about what you're passionate about and then expecting people to help you out with it on Christmases and birthdays, right? Um... Which is why we say, you know, when you find a girlfriend or wife or whatever, or, or you know, a female or a male who who likes the fact that you do Warhammer and that makes you happy, wife them or husband them up immediately, right? Go go and sort them out because, you know, that means a lot. And they can do a lot of legwork with your family and friends and making sure that, you know, you get the stuff that you want for your birthday or Christmas. Because those are the times to, you know, get some hobby stuff that you're not getting to pay for yourself. So that's number one out the way. And us, us single people, you know, well, the rest of the advice is, is mainly aimed at you. So first of all, what kind of things do we need to be doing to make sure that we're not spending an ungodly amount on hobby, on models? Well, the internet is your friend. This is eBay. I'm sure you've all been on eBay. Everyone has. We all have, right? So the, the first main thing that I wanted to give you is some pros and cons on different ways to go and get your models when you're on things like eBay. So, first of all, there are a few cons that are on here first. But the pros are, uh, normally, normally, cheap models. Okay, so we're looking at uh, all of our models on here. Um, I've been looking at uh, some Outriders for my Space Marine chapter, right? Buy it now, £18.39. That is near enough half price. Near enough half price. Now, is this guy a good seller? Well, it says he is up here, 98.9% .9 positive feedback, which is great, you know. Um, we should be getting uh, uh, um, these Outriders in. It should be really nice. You've got, uh, got uh, uh, bike, uh, bike Squad Sprue Outriders, 19.99, right? Each, though. So these are each. So I'm guessing the, the, if you get one of them, quantity one, uh, three Primaris Outriders, uh, Space Marine Bike Squad Sprue. Okay, I, I guess... I guess you get all of them, okay? I guess you get all of them. But you can always, uh, you know, email them or, or message them and say, hey, are, the, are these all of the Outriders for $19.99? Um, if so, that's a smashing deal because he is advertising them as all three. Look, that is a smashing deal, right? I've already got this uh, uh, this sprue in the other room, actually. But it is an absolutely smashing deal that, that you should really, really take advantage of if you're wanting some Outriders, right? There are loads and loads of deals just like this that are near enough half price because if we look on games workshop um games workshop okay so i'm gonna do outriders 
see how much they are. 37.50, right? 37.50 for three outriders. I mean, you're getting them from the horse's mouth, so they're going to be coming pretty soon, you would expect. But, you know, £18 off, £18.50 off. You know, more than £18 off, looking nearly half price now with this one here over here, right? So these are all on sprue, or bikes on frame, all on sprue, and directly to your house. Now, that is a fantastic deal, and of course, you, you would be hoping that most of the time you'd be able to go out and get these models wherever and wherever you can, but you need to be on the lookout for deals like this all the time. And a lot of the sellers on eBay are quite decent. A lot of them will message you and email you and, and stay in contact with you throughout the process. A lot of them will be giving you pretty good deals on what you can get. I have seen some shocking deals on eBay. For instance, I'm thinking about starting an Astra Militarum force um, over the summer. as like a little summer project for myself because now my Space Marine chapter is almost finished. Um, and to be honest with you, I was looking at the Gaunt's Ghost set because they look pretty cool. And I was thinking, oh, right, they're available here for £11. That's great. Cool. No, 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 no. £11 each for each of the models in that set. And there's 10 of them, right? or 8 of them. £11. I mean, yeah, you do get some people who are just taking the piss, to be honest with you, um, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, cons, all right, there are some nightmare purchases on, on eBay. We've all had those where you, you, know, you get it through. You're not dealing with a company. That's the main thing. The main thing that Games Workshop are giving you when they're giving you like prices like this is you're dealing with Games Workshop. And even though we've had horror stories from them in the past, most of the time, this is a very big company. They want to make sure that you're looked after. And that, you know, if you're given an incomplete sprue or the wrong models or something's missing from the set, like like bases or, or whatever, or transfers, they will sort you out. And normally they've been pretty good about um, whenever I've heard other people when they've been stuff missing from a set, they get a new one. They don't even ask for the old one back. They just give you a new one. Okay, sorry. They give you a new one, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's what you're paying for. for. For me, when you're paying £37.50 with Games Workshop, you're getting it from the horse's mouth, but you're also paying for full-on, you know, um, company step in. They're able to step in and say, okay, you haven't got the models that you wanted Let's sort you out, right? Let's make sure that you, you have what you need. Whereas with eBay sellers, you know, some of them might be cowboys. I mean, this guy has a 98.9%. That's brilliant, but it still means he's gotten a few bad bad ones out there. You know, bad experiences up there. But, again, I would say this guy has got, you know, 4,260. Is that score there? I mean, th th these these are sellers that are pretty re reputable, right? These are those guys who are who are selling good, good products. I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to buy at least one of these from one of these sellers, right? You know? And it just is is what it is. I'm probably not going to get from this guy because I'm I'm starting to think now this is um yeah buy two mm, yeah I'm not sure how that's working out. So this is another thing you need to work out with with eBay is making sure that you know what you're getting, and that is making sure that you have contact with the buyer, you have contact with the fact that with the seller, sorry, you have contact with the fact of what you're getting and how you're getting it and when you're going to get it. Know all those things before you part with your money. Never just buy stuff from eBay like you're buying from a store. Because at the end of the day, you're getting it nice and cheap. But the downside to that is, you have to talk to these people to make sure that you are getting what you, 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 you are getting. And that you have written proof of what you should be getting from your purchase, right? So, um, there are nightmares out there. People do, you know, you, you know, try and stiff you every now and again, which is a bit shitty. Uh, but I had a friend called uh, Lawrence in University. And he basically funded his entire... Warhammer habit on eBay. He had a Grey Knights army and a Blood Angels army, and he bought entire armies from eBay. Just just a couple of hundred quid here, a couple of hundred quid there, and he would have an entire army. You know, he would go out and get a, a Dread Knight that he thought was pretty cool for like ten pounds. You know, and he'd build his army that way. He would accept that it, sometimes they would be painted, sometimes they'd be painted different colours, and he'd strip them down as much as he could and, and would paint them up as much as he can. And he had a pretty cool looking army. And of course, you would want models that are completely your own straight from games workshop in an ideal world but that's not the world that we live in is it let's be honest so um in terms of ebay tire kickers have you ever heard the phrase tire kickers it's something that we get in the uk quite a lot and that is when you're selling a car uh, sometimes somebody will come round to your house and then they don't, they've got no real they're time wasters essentially they've got no real notion of actually buying the car they just want to look at the car 
you know, they, they, they kick the tires, lean on them a little bit, and like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, no, I'm not too sure, I'll get back to you, shit like that, right? Well, you know, you can actually get, unfortunately, sellers that are like this as well, even though you're not selling them anything. I have actually had messages from sellers where they've been like, okay, so what are you using these models for? Well, it's none of your fucking business, is it? If I want to buy your models and throw them in the bin, that's up to me, because I'm buying the models, right? Yeah, but I want to make sure they go into a good home. Dude, they're not pets. They don't have feelings. The models, right? Yeah. And it goes into my next point on eBay, meeting the unwashed. If you have to go and pick... <laughs> Sorry, yeah, meeting the unwashed. I know it sounds harsh. But if you go in and go and pick up these models from somebody's house, you will have to say hello to them and meet them. And, and I've... I've Listen, it's, 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 I swear to God, it's like meeting somebody for illicit sex. It's horrible. Like, you, do, <laughs> you just turn up. And they're like... Hey, 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 here's your models, blah, blah. And thankfully, some of the only times I've done this, right, I've literally picked up the models and left. Um, I have been offered a cup of tea a few times. You know, I mean, I thank you. I thank you. But um, no, like, I, I've come for the models. I don't know who you are. You're technically a stranger. We're not friends. Um, thank you for sending me the models. Brilliant. Um, and if I see you around, I might buy you a pint when we're out and about, when there's other people there. But I don't want to come into your home. Thank you. Brilliant, because I don't know whether you've got a taser in your other hand and a bat in your other and a big old strap on, you know, on the wall somewhere, right? I, I, that, that's, I, I don't know who you are, right? So just, yeah. So dealing with other people <clears throat> who aren't part of a company that can be held responsible is the big downside to eBay, right? So that's number one on the list of things that I would make sure that you do if you want to keep your hobby affordable. Next thing is actually Etsy. Now, this is something that... I have only come across in the past year or so, um, quite reasonably, you know, because I thought Etsy was all for, like, teddy bears and shit. The amount of girlfriends that I bought stuff on Etsy for, you know, like, just, like, fucking, you know, teddy here or, a, you know, or, or, or a charm bracelet here or there or, you know, little shitty things like that. I had no idea this stuff was here until I just, on one day, just searched for it, and here we are. So... Good things about Etsy. Well, normally, normally, fantastic professionals. Every single person that I've messaged on Etsy has been brilliant. Um, I've got things like this, like white scars helmets for my for my Marines, right? Different sorts of helmets, different sorts of things that I want to make my models stand out and be cool. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I want to come across. And guys like this, normally quite fairly priced. I mean, eleven pounds, bit pricey. For 10 helmets, but okay, yeah, you're a pound or so a helmet. Okay, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. Um, bad thing is, a lot of the stuff is not free postage, especially if you're getting it from the States. Getting it from the States, it can come to a point where, it, if you're in the UK, where it's just not worth doing at all, you know. Um, but if you can find that deal that really makes your army stand out and it's reasonable, Etsy can be the place to come and get your stuff from, right? You can see these are high quality prints. These are not things that, if I stuck this on a Space Marine in my army, no one's going to be able to figure out that that's not a Games Workshop helmet. You're just not, right? Even somebody who works at Games Workshop look at that helmet and assume I have a normal Space Marine helmet that I've stuck a plume onto, right? From another set. And I think, oh, that's a pretty cool, you know, pretty cool model there. That's pretty cool, right? So that the professionalism on some of these guys, um, a lot of these guys on Etsy take huge pride in the work that they put forward and the sculpts that they sell you, which is fantastic stuff. It's exactly what you want. It's somebody who takes it very, very, very seriously, right? Now, that's for completing your army. You can get all sorts from Etsy. You get transfers and helmets and arms and weapons and all sorts, right? There's loads of stuff that you get. get and there are loads of different... Uh, 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 like like Cromlech and people like that. There's loads of different websites where you can get like, little bits for your models. But here's the interesting stuff. Full models that you can get on Etsy that are kind of actually quite cheap. Let's look at this, this, this angelic crash captain, right? I've just built a captain just like this, right? Um, from Games Workshop stuff, but still built him. And uh, I think this guy looks absolutely fantastic. Look, I mean, look at him. Look at that, right? Now, this is obviously a 3D um, STL file, I think it's called. And, you know, it's showing you what it should look like when it comes out of the, when it comes out of the box. But I also like, 
It's things like this where they actually show you what the different parts look like when they come to you. Ugh, when they come to you, right? This is exactly what you want. Find a seller that does stuff like this and shows you exactly how it's going to come, right? I know it looks daunting if you're going to clip all this off yourself and shave it down yourself. But remember, you're getting a model here. Let's be honest. If, I, if you get a model like this, Games Workshop are going to charge you up of, upwards of £70, £80, £85, £90 for a Primark level model like this. Okay? This is going to be worth a lot of money to them. Um, hopefully most of the details coming up on this again. I'll get into that in a second. But this, this is the kind of thing that you want to be seeing from sellers that are on Etsy. Right, the kind of thing you want to be want to be seeing, and is another model unrelated to what we've just seen, um, but it is a a printed model of a, of a D and D figure. Right, so this isn't the same level of quality as the other one. It's far cheaper, but as you can see, even this really cheap model, right, undercoated and painted properly, that's going to look pretty cool. Right, that's going to look pretty pretty cool on the tabletop. And he bought this. It's this eight ninety nine. Right. So it's supposed to be like a, a D and D figure that you do all in one colour. Right? That you do all in one colour and you and you do it like this, right? So you just spray it in one colour and it's done, rather than doing anything else. And I think it looks pretty pretty good to me. I think it looks pretty cool. Um But yeah, so things like like your your Space Marine Captain here, your Angelic Crash Captain. Um again you got to look at your reviews, okay? So you've got cool reviews here. And let's, let's have a look at this guy. Uh, un okay, unrelated, but, you know, uh, looks like a, a werewolf of some kind. Well, a side-on view. That looks brilliant. That looks phenomenal. Like, from, from a... from a, That is brilliant. And that's a Wendigo, sorry. Wendigo. And how much is the Wendigo? Oh, it's unavailable now, so he's sold out. Okay, fair enough. Um, But for seventeen ninety nine, getting... If, if you got this kind of quality, right... On this model, you are looking at a top, top, top tier model for 18 quid, right? And if you're in the UK, that's going to go up to about 23, 24 quid. Let's see. Um, yeah, 32 mil. Okay, it's a normal Space Marine size. You want a, want a Primark size, it's 40 quid. But 32, 32, seven, uh, 18 quid, right? So, absolutely phenomenal stuff. And you can find these all over Etsy as well. Let's have a, let's have a look for a few more. Um, Lord with sword. I quite like this guy. Look, looks like he's just in an austere, austere moment. Um, Forty-six millimeter. So he's pretty big. He's pretty big. A little bit bigger than a normal space marine, I think. Um, but this is fantastic. Look, he actually comes in his own blister pack. They have their own blister pack. That's beautiful stuff. We have obviously the different parts that go together to make the model as well. All right, lovely stuff. Brilliant. And he's like that. He looks a bit monoposed to me, like he's just there, and you just, you know. And I'd like to, I like his head to be like turning a little bit, but you can always shave it down and and, and do things yourself to it. Um, but yeah, nineteen pounds twenty five, and you know, absolutely, absolutely lovely, a lovely, lovely, lovely model. And again, this is full. This website is full of shit like this. It really is, and you've got whole squads as well. So, if you're looking for really cool looking knights, looking at uh, uh, Templars, for instance, Black Templars, well, here's a whole squad. Whole squad of Black Templars, um, dynamic poses. And I think the monopose thing kind of goes away when you're having models like this on the tabletop because nobody else will have them. The very reason why you want to do so many um, um, non monoposed units on the tabletop is because when games workshop give you these kits you don't want them to look like everybody else's space marines right you paid m enough money for them you want them to look like your space marines and your things that you did well when you got things like this from atlan forge they don't look like that no one else will have these will have the world very few people will have these models on the tabletop right um do are, are they falling away in places like i don't quite like the way the robes are attached to the to the to the thing here, to, 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 the, to the chest piece there. Yes, you know, there are little bits that I perhaps don't like. But in terms of, you know, good quality models for... How much are you charging for? £25.50 for unit of five. I mean, I'd say that's pretty good value for money. You know, I definitely would say that's pretty good value for money. Um, especially if this is what you're going for. If you're going for this, this specific look, right? And even then, 
from what I can see, you can pose them differently, like this guy here, right? And they look absolutely gorgeous in terms of the of the files that you get here. So you have um, Thousand Suns here as well. So Thousand Suns type models here. I mean, look at that. You know, they look absolutely gorgeous, right? Beautiful looking models. Really, really high detail. Even hieroglyphics on there. Like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yeah. So in terms of making the hobby more affordable... You know, I would say this is a really, really, really good way of going about it. Now, one I was looking at before was actually Guts <laughs> from Berserk as a Space Marine. Um, seriously thinking about getting this guy. I might actually have to get him um, because I think he just looks pretty cool. And, you know, take his uh, his helmet off and use one of the helmets that I, I showed in the video the other day. Um, just to make him this, like, wandering swordsman type who wants to go and kill Fulgrim. Um, but, yeah. Beautiful stuff, and that, that is one of the main reasons why I think Etsy is a really good choice if you want your own specific models. Now, uh, some of the cons. Some models can lack quality if you don't do your due diligence, right? These guys are professionals for the most part, so if you if you um, message them on Etsy and you ask them for pictures of things that they printed in the past, most of them will do that for you. So you have a really good idea of the kind of quality that you're going to get for your money. And these guys want repeat business, they want you to come back and so if that i would say that that negative is offset by the fact that you know most of the good sellers and you can always find out which are the worst ones because they won't just give you any any picture of the models will give you like you know good good feedback and good things to do your due diligence with essentially nice pictures and testimonials things like that so one of the big downsides these are not gw models okay and they are easily spotted as not being Citadel miniatures, even if they're high quality. And these these guys are high quality, right? You can see them, right? They are high quality miniatures. But you can tell, any hobbyist can tell, these are not Games Workshop Terminators. These are not Scarab Occult Terminators. Uh, these, well, they are, but they're, but they're not GW models. And every, anyone can see that. So you need to be happy with the fact that when you're going into the hobby store... Or whatever people are gonna say oh what are they and you say well i've got them on atlan forge they're really cool models they're like you know and they are so and so yeah but i do know players right? i don't agree with them but i do know players that do not play at games workshop that play at normal hobby stores that wouldn't play you if you had models like this right because they would say things like well you know i may as well take off my shoe and put it on the table and say that that's a rhino right we're playing with games. Game. We're playing games. Workshop's game. We should be playing with games. Workshop's miniatures, or at least like Forge World or whatever. It doesn't matter to me as long as it's like Citadel. That's what the models that we're playing with. Now I kind of see their point, but at the same time, um, I think any model like this is going to cost some money, and so should be assessed to as this guy's put a lot of effort and work into their models. Now, do I think you should order these models straight from Atlan Forge? glue them together and just throw them on the tabletop. No, these are beautiful models. Paint them, you know? Showcase how good you are at painting with these beautifully detailed models. That's what I would do. Um, and that should alleviate a lot of that stuff that you're going to get in hobby stores. But I do know certain guys who would be sticklers and saying, no, I'm not doing that. You know, I don't I don't agree with them. I see the point, but I don't agree with them, right? But, that, but you would still run into those guys. Now, saying that, if you tried to play with these in, in my Games Workshop store, I would tell you not to. Uh, because if my boss came in and saw you playing with them, I would probably be sacked. Or at least get a written warning for allowing non-Games Workshop models to be played in my store. Okay? And I'm not getting sacked for you. So I would I would say, look, you know, that, that these aren't Games Workshop models. I don't sell these here. So you can't play with them, essentially, right? Why would I not allow Forge World? Because that's the, that's the current standard, you know? Yeah, they don't allow Forge World in the store. Why would I not allow entire Forge World models? Because, you know, I don't sell them in the store and then allow stuff that isn't even Games Workshop or Citadel affiliated, right? Okay, so they are clearly not Games Workshop models. And that is one of the one of the main drawbacks of Etsy, is that they're not Games Workshop models. And you know they're not Games Workshop models, and so does everybody else who is playing you in the hobby too. And not that it would matter to me, I think they're fucking cool if we're in a hobby store somewhere. So, right, let's go back to... Other sellers, so I can get rid of that now. So other sellers. So other sellers are people like Whalen Games, um, Goblin Gaming, people like that, who are online. Um, they tend to give 20% uh, off actual GW stock and are pretty reputable. So these are guys who are going to be pretty good at sorting out any complaints that you might have when you're buying 
actual GW models from them. But I would also be very careful because a lot of the timing of the deliveries from these people can not be good enough at times for the money paid. 20% off a GW model is not as much as you might think. Um, especially because sometimes they say, um, and Wayland Games does this quite a lot, where they say, oh, 20% off Games Workshop models. But they don't tell you which models. And so some models would be 5% off, some models would be 10% off, some models would be 15, some models would be 20. Um, it depends. And sometimes it can kid you that way too. So most of the top selling stuff, and especially the new stuff, will not be 20% off in places like Wailing Games or Goblin Gaming or anywhere, really. Because why would they do that, right? It would have a certain amount off, but also you're paying for postage. And with Games Workshop, if you get your stuff sent to a Games Workshop store, it is free postage. Now... I would actually advise you to not do that. I know that's kind of controversial. I would advise you not to buy stuff from Games Workshop's online store and get it sent to a Games Workshop store. Because as a Games Workshop manager, I saw it as the height of cheek. What, so you're just going to use my Games Workshop store as your own personal fucking post box? And I've seen none of this money, by the way. None of this money has gone through my till at all. So, you just... You, you sat on your fat ass at home, you ordered it online, and to get free postage, you sent it to my Games Workshop store, where it takes up space in my store, that I've already got limited space, and now you're going to come in and not give me any money, you're going to say, give me my, my post, I give it to you, and then you just leave. It's just height of cheek, right? And some of these people were really cool dudes, they'd come in and get other things. So they'd get stuff sent to my store, but then they'd get... You know, a spray paint or a white door for something just to help me out a little bit say thank you for holding my model for me you know but most of them would just pick up their box and leave and i'd never see them again until two months later where they did another big art big ass fucking order of like 50 boxes and that took up all my space in the back for free and then and then you know came pick you know, it really just drove me up the wall um one thing i would advise you to do if you want to take advantage of the free postage policy of getting stuff sent to a Games Workshop store, is order it from the Games Workshop store. Say, hey man, can I use your... Uh, and, and if you say this to a Games Workshop manager, they will be eating out of your hand. They will think you are the biggest legend walking the face of the earth. If you walk into a Games Workshop store that you like, and you say, hey man, um, I've got this stuff I want to get online, but instead of getting it at home and just getting it sent here, I want, you to get, yeah, I want it to go through your till. So do you mind if... I use the kiosk and we order it on there and I pay for it here and I get my free postage and I come pick it up here, right? Brilliant, right? If I know you and I'm a Games Workshop, I've done this before, by the way. If I know you and I'm the Games Workshop manager and I know where you live and you did that for me and people did do that for me once or twice, I would say, hey man, how about I'll do you one better, right? You get sent straight to the store, okay? 300, 400 pounds worth of stuff. I will bring it round to your house. I will literally come round to your house and knock on the door and give it to you on my way home from work. Not a problem. As long as it was on my way, not a problem. You know, um, Reciprocate these things and make sure that you're supporting your local Games Workshop store if you like the manager, right? If he's not a total douchebag. So, um, other sellers though, um, sometimes the timing of their deliveries cannot be very good. All right? I've heard many complaints. I've never had a problem with Wayland Games. They've always been very good to me. Um, because I used to call them up quite a lot when I was working with GW because I used to get some of my stuff sent there by accident because their depot was quite close to, well, one of their one of their little storage areas was quite close to where my store was. And so UPS, not knowing, being fucking idiots, would take some of my stock there and some of their stock to me sometimes because they just thought, ah, it's Warhammer, we'll just go over, here, you know, I, whatever. Um, so they've always been very good to me. I've always got my, my models within a reasonable amount of time. Even if, if I if I've just ordered a few paints, I normally get them within a few within a few days. But I have known friends of mine to um, order something from from Whalen Games that hasn't turned up for months, and then you know they said oh it's out of stock sort of thing, right? You know, so yeah, it, it can be very careful on, with online sellers, is all I'm saying. So your friendly local hobby store, um, prices are good are not as good as most online uh, sellers. When you go into a friendly local game store. Um, a lot of people tend to be very fooled by the fact that it's not quite as expensive as it is in a normal hobby store. But actually, they, they trick you, <clears throat> just like you know, online sellers do. Some Because they can charge whatever they like. Some things are 20% off. Some things are 5% off. Some things, and I shit you not, 
are exactly the same price as they are in a normal games workshop, but people will still rather buy from the friendly local game store because they have the 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 illusion in their head that somehow it's costing less than it is from the actual games workshop store. You know, I just I just don't understand it. But psychology, hey, psychology. Um, so yeah, be very careful because some of the some of the stuff isn't uh, that great a deal from the local from the friendly local game store. Um, you do deal with a great unwashed when you're in a friendly local game store. Um, unlike Games Workshop, where they, they, they are supposed to have standards of cleanliness, most hobby stores don't, I'm afraid. Most hobby stores will generally just be like, meh, you know, as long as you give me money, I don't care if you smell, or if you smell as shit, or if you just come in here and stare at women inappropriately the entire time that you're here. You know, so you're going to have to deal with that. But, on the other hand, or like most Games Workshops stores, there is a good atmosphere and advice most of the time. Obviously, I do run a series on this channel called Hobby Nightmares where we discuss some of the bad things that go on in some of these stores. But on the whole, you know, hobby stores tend to be pretty cool places, right? So, Games Workshop itself is the least best place to go and buy stuff for your hobby. The prices are terrible, as we know. There is no incentive to get big purchases at the Games Workshop store because they don't take any money off, right? You get a lot of dry humping by staff into buying things that you may not want, right? And you get some very rude staff that are very rude to you if you say you're just looking around. You just want to look at different things and things like that because they are pressured into dry humping you to get more stuff or to buy stuff that's going to do, shoot their KPIs a little bit better, right? So if you find a good Games Workshop store, get the odd purchase there to, to, put, to support them, right? And get a White Dwarf magazine too, okay? But I would advise you against getting a huge amount of your hobby at the Games Workshop store at the moment. Unfortunate, but that is how it is. So that is how I would keep your hobby nice and affordable. So for for really big purchases, like if you wanna if you wanna get if you wanna get the, the the big army, I would go for online sellers, right, to get the big bulk stuff of Games Workshop things, um, official Games Workshop things, to get the things to finish off your army. I would go on eBay. Right, this is the this is the ideal scenario. Right, let's say you've got a full time job, you're doing quite well. Right, go on online sellers to get your army, get your twenty five, get get your get your ten to twenty percent off or five percent off, whatever, on the online sellers. Get the bulk of your army there. Uh, finish them off uh, on eBay. So what I what I normally do is I have a vision for my army in my head of what I want it to be, in general, and that vision will come into sharper and sharper and sharper focus as I go on, in in collecting and painting these models. And so I will get the first bulk order online of what I want to start my army with. And then the more and more and more I specialize the army, I go on eBay. So for now, obviously, I'm, I, I've gotten Blade Guard and um, Outriders from eBay. Because, you know, I, I don't want to spend that much money on specific units. So I go and get them from eBay to finish off my army. Um, and then if I want special characters and special one-off units... Uh, that are going to be like the centerpiece model of my entire force. That's something that nobody else has. Etsy. I go on Etsy and I get myself a one-off character that I then chop up and convert myself to look especially cool on the tabletop, right? And that's how I'd go about collecting my army now as I'm going to start collecting one. I I'm deciding what army to collect this summer just to start with because um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from Space Marines now. I've, I've finished. I've got Grey Knights and I've got uh, my own chapter. I'm pretty much done with them now. I'm painting them up, obviously, but buying them, I'm pretty much done. So I'm going to buy a new and uh, start a new army in the summer. And so I'm going to be going through this process. So I thought now would be the greatest time to sh share how I'm going to go about it. And maybe how you should go about it too. So the other two things, um, the friendly local game store and the games workshop, those are the two that are on the bottom of my list. Um, if I'm in your friendly local game store, I'll get something like green stuff or a white dwarf or a pot of paint or a spray paint or something just to say thank you for having me. But in terms of an actual model, you would need to be giving me a really good deal. Because not forget, I've got to carry this shit home. So you'd need to be giving me a really good deal, or you would need to be the best store ever for me to do that, right? Unfortunately, because there are cheaper ways of doing it these days. So that is how I'd, I would go about it. Um, how do you go about getting your models? You know, how do you go about keeping your hobby affordable? Let me know in the comments below. I love your long time. This video went far longer than I thought it was going to because I tend to ramble a lot. But some people like that. And if you do, then thank you very much for watching. I love you all. Have a nice cheap time in the hobby. 
See you later. Have a good one.